F-stop and T-stop, what is the difference between these two? Hey guys, my name is Dylan, and to break it down in simple terms, let me quickly run through what an F-stop number on a lens represents. If you know this already, you can go ahead and skip to the next chapter in this video if you want. In layman's terms, an F-stop number basically tells us how wide this thing can crank open relative to the lens's focal length. So an 85 millimeter lens with a max aperture diameter of 43 millimeters comes out to an f-stop number of around f2. Knowing how wide this hole opens up is an important thing for us to know because it gives us a general sense of how much we'll be able to throw the background out of focus to create a shallow depth of field. And at the same time, it lets us know about how much light the lens will let in. The bigger the hole, the smaller the f-stop number, which means more light comes through. This is helpful to determine if the lens would be a good choice to use in low light scenarios. If you are shooting in the dark, it would be much better to use an f1.8 lens over an f4 lens. That way you can let in more light by opening up your aperture and not by cranking up your ISO, which can introduce a lot of noise. However, an f-stop number isn't necessarily an absolute value, and here's where the main difference between f-stop and t-stop comes in, so stay with me here. Say you have two 50mm lenses from different manufacturers, both with an f-stop of f1.8. You'd assume that since both are the same focal length and their lens aperture opens up the same diameter, that they let in the same amount of light, but this isn't always true. Because of all the different glass elements inside the lenses, reflections inside the lenses, and other obstacles like these, they can actually impact how much light comes through your lens to hit your sensor. So even though they're both 50mm f1.8 lenses, one could let in more light than the other. On the other hand, a t-stop number is precise. We know that if we have two lenses with a t-stop of t2.8, they're gonna let in the same amount of light. And that is because these lenses are tested to determine how much light actually makes it through the lens to hit the camera sensor. Then the t-stop number is calculated by dividing the lens's f-stop number by the square root of the amount of light that gets through. And that amount of light is called light transmittance. The T in T-stop actually stands for transmission. T-stops can be found on cinema lenses, and it is one reason why these lenses are so damn expensive. Aside from the quality of optics, each lens is tested to determine precisely how much light is actually let in. F-stop lenses are not put through these extra tests. Now you may be thinking, why does that even matter? For most people, especially photographers, it really doesn't matter. Even for most videographers, I'd argue it is not that big of a deal for most projects. But when making, say, a big budget film, think of how annoying it would be to shoot a scene with a few cameras, getting different angles, you have some lenses shooting at the same f-stop number, but after the shoot, you notice that all the shots taken have a slightly different exposure. Yes, it can be corrected in post or by adjusting exposure in camera before, but Time is money, and just having that consistency across lenses can give filmmakers peace of mind. That's where lenses with T-stop numbers can help out. I'm curious to know if any of you own cinema lenses, so let me know if you do in the comments, and be sure to check out this video all about film grain and if you should use it in your videos. Enjoy your day, guys.